Category O, Lecture 23, An Action of the Singular Braid Monoid. Let us start with a brief recap of Artin's braid group. For a positive integer n, the corresponding Artin's braid group Bn is generated by the elements sigma1, sigma2, and so on up to sigma n minus 1, which are supposed to satisfy the braid relations. So these are the relations that sigma i and sigma j commute if i and j are not neighbors. And sigma i, sigma i plus 1, sigma i is equal to sigma i plus 1, sigma i, sigma i plus 1 for all i for which the expression makes sense. The topological interpretation of braids is given by the following diagram where strands connect points. And the element sigma i corresponds to the following diagram where we have the point 1 connected to 1, 2 to 2, and so on, and the point i is connected to the point i plus 1, where i plus 1 is connected to i such that the strand connecting i to i plus 1 goes under the strand connecting i plus 1 to i. So, And all other points are connected by the strands directly to them. So the topological interpretation of the braid relations is as follows. So if we have two generators which are far away from each other, then they commute. This we can see on this picture. And if the generators are the neighboring generators, then we have this long braid relation, which we can see on this picture. And we also see that this braid relation corresponds to the topological manipulation with this diagram. So we have the strand which connects point 3 with point 1, which is the strand which goes above the others. So it is pulled down. The strand connecting the middle points is the middle one, so it's pulled up. And the strand connecting the first and the third point, it's the one which is below the two other strands, it is also pulled down. Previously in the course, we have considered several braid group actions on the bounded derived category of O0 for the Lie algebra SLN. Let's recall them. So we consider the Lie algebra SLN with a fixed triangular decomposition into the direct sum of the negative part and minus, the Cartan subalgebra H, and the positive part and plus. We denote by O0 the principal block of the bernstein gelfand gelfand category O associated to this triangular decomposition. Then dB O0 is the bounded derived category of O0. So the simple objects in O0 are indexed by the elements of the while group, which in the case of SLN is isomorphic to the symmetric group SN. And we have the following families of endofunctors of O0. We have the projective functor theta w indexed by w and w. We have the shuffling functor cw, the co shuffling functors kw, the twisting functors tw, and Joseph's completion functors jw. So all these functors are indexed by elements of the while group. And recall that we know that. The derived functors of twisting, shuffling, co-shuffling, and Joseph's completion, they all are self-equivalences of the bounded derived category of O0. Let us denote by S the set of simple reflections of W. So this set consists of the elementary transpositions S1, which swaps 1 and 2, S2, which swaps 2 and 3, and so on. And we have seen the following theorem that the derived Joseph's completion functors are GS, where S is a simple reflection, so these functors satisfy braid relations. Similarly, the derived twisting functors LTS, where S is a simple reflection, these satisfy braid relations. The derived shuffling functors LCS, where S is a simple reflection, satisfy the braid relations. And the derived co shuffling functors are KS, where S is a simple reflection, they, they also satisfy the braid relations. From this theorem, we have the following corollary. Assigning to each generator sigma s, where s is a simple reflection, 
So sigma s is a generator of the break group. So if we assign to sigma s the derived functor rjs, so this assignment extends to a weak action of the braid group on the bounded derived category of O0. Similarly, we can assign to sigma s the left derived of the twisting functor Ts, or the left derived of the shuffling functor Cs, or the right derived of the co-shuffling functor Ks. All these assignments give us weak actions of the braid group on the bounded derived category of O0. So here is a quick SL2 example. Consider the Lie algebra SL2, and for this Lie algebra, the while group is just the symmetric group S2, which consists of the identity element and the simple reflection S. The action of the functor LCS on indecomposable modules in O0 is given in the following table. So LCS sends the dominant projective module PE to the simple module LS. So it sends the dominant projective module PS to itself, shifted by one in the grading. It sends the indecomposable injective module IE to the following complex. So LS shifted by minus two goes to PS, goes to PS shifted by two. So here PS shifted by two is in the homological position zero. So it sends LE to LE shifted by one in the homological position and by minus one in the gradient. And finally, it sends LS to IE. The action of the right derived of KS on indecomposable modules in O0 is given in the following table. So now the indecomposable projective PE is sent to the following complex. PS, which is in the homological position zero, goes to PS shifted by two, goes to LS shifted by two. The module PS is sent to itself, shifted by minus one in the gradient. The module IS is sent to LS. The module LE is sent to LE, shifted by minus one in the homological position and by one in the gradient. And finally, the module LS is sent to PE. So in particular, from this description, we see that the left derived of Cs to the power i, when acts on the simple module Le, is equal to Le shifted by i in the homological position and by minus i in the gradient. And this is true for all i greater than or equal to zero. Consequently, the action of the break group B2, which in this case is isomorphic to the group of integers under addition. So the action of this group on O0 is faithful. There is a general version of this, which is known as hovanov zeidel theorem. So Hovanov and Zeidel showed that the action of Bn via shuffling functors on the principal block of category O for SLN is faithful. So here is a brief idea of the proof. Let P be a parabolic subalgebra of SLN such that the semisimple part of the Levy factor of P is isomorphic to SL n minus one. We can consider the parabolic category O0 P corresponding to this P and the category X defined at the bounded derived category of the graded version of O0 P. Then shuffling functors preserve O0 P and hence the action of Bn on O0 restricts to an action on X. And what Hovanov and Zaydin did, they showed, working really hard, that this action on X is faithful. Note that on the level of the Grotendieck group, one obtains the so-called Burau representation of Bn, and this is known to be unfaithful for sufficiently large n. So this theorem is proved in the paper Quiver's Fleur Homology and the Braid Group Actions by Havana and Zeidel from 2002. So now let us go to the main protagonist of this lecture, the singular braid monoid. For the usual braid group, 
we have the braid diagrams, which contain two types of crossings. So if you have two crossing strands, then one of them necessarily goes over the other one. It's a two-dimensional projection of a three-dimensional picture. So now for the singular braids, we introduce a new kind of crossing called singular crossing. And this is the crossing where the two strands intersect. So and you can depict them with just pointing out the intersection by a thick black point, or alternatively just by crossing the strands. So if the strands are crossing without showing which one goes over the other one, then they intersect. So this implies that for the singular braid monoid, we will have new generators, and these are the generators where we have these new types of crossings, the intersecting crossing. And this should be compared to the old generators where we have crossings in which it was clear that one strand goes above the other strand. Now we can define the singular braid monoid. A singular braid is a composition of various generators of the form sigma i to the power plus minus one and tau j up to a singular braid isotopy, which fixes the initial and end points. And the singular braid monoid is the monoid of all singular braids with respect to composition. One should note that the generators tau j's are not invertible in the singular braid monoid. Here is an example of the composition tau 1 sigma 2 tau 1 sigma 2 inverse, which is equal to the composition tau 1 sigma 1 inverse tau 2 sigma 1. So here is the corresponding diagrams. So we have the strand from 3 to 1, which intersects the strand from 2 to 3, and that strand in turn intersects the strand from 1 to 2. And this diagram can be deformed, as it is very easy to see, to obtain the diagram on the right. So here, this part of the upper strand intersection was pulled up, while the lower diagram, the lower strand here, was pulled down. So singular braid monoids appeared in the paper of Brugman, Gambini, and Poulin in 1992 and also in the paper of Bias in the same year, who refers to the first paper. But it was studied in a little bit more detail in the paper by Berman from 1993. So in particular, Berman proves in her paper the following theorem, that the singular braid monoid has the following presentation with respect to the generator sigma i plus minus one, and tau j. Please note that we now should take both sigma i's and their inverses, because we are now talking about the monoid. In the group presentation, it's enough to take sigma i's, because then it's a group, so the sigma i inverses are added automatically. For the monoid presentation, we must take also the inverses of the sigma i's. And here are the relations. First of all, sigma i's and sigma i inverses are the inverses to each other. Then we have the two sets of braid relations for the sigma i's. The first three relations basically say that the sigma i's and their inverses generate a copy of a braid group. And now we have the relations which only involves tau i's. So tau i and tau j commute if i and j are not neighbors. And then we also have two sets of relations which mix sigmas and tau. Sigma i and tau j commute if the indices do not differ by one. And we have this version of the braid relation, sigma i, sigma i plus one tau i is equal to tau i plus one, sigma i, sigma i plus one. Here are the topological interpretations of the really non-trivial relations. The first one is that sigma i commutes with tau i. So here is the corresponding diagram. We have tau 1 on the right and sigma 1 on the left. And now we can pull tau 1 
to the left, but then we have to unwind the left intersection, which results in the right intersection. And the relation sigma 1 sigma 2 tau 1 is equal to tau 2 sigma 1 sigma 2 is given at this picture. And here it is very clear that we have the intersecting strands connecting 3 to 1 and 2 to 2. And they go above the strand which connects 1 to 3. So it can be moved, it can be pulled up and to the left. So the topological interpretations of these relations are pretty clear. There is a very easy connection between the singular braid monoid and the integral group ring of the braid group. And the claim is that the assignment of sending sigma i to the power plus minus one to itself and sending tau i to the difference sigma i minus sigma i inverse so this assignment extends uniquely to a monoid homomorphism from the singular braid monoid to the integral group algebra of Bn. In order to prove this, one just checks the defining relations for the images of the generators. So this homomorphism, eta, is usually called the desingularization map, and it is important in the theory of Vassiliev invariance of braids. One consequence of this map is that every linear representation of the braid group extends in a natural way to a representation of the singular braid monoid. In 2004, Luis Paris proved that the map eta is injective. So this was conjectured by Biermann. So you can read this proof in his paper, The Proof of Biermann's Conjecture on Singular Braid Monoids, from 2004. Let us now discuss an action of the singular braid monoid on the boundary derived category of O0. So we denote by Si the elementary transposition of i and i plus 1 in the symmetric group Sn. Theorem due to Katerina Stroppel and myself. The assignment of sigma i is sent to the left derived functor of CSI. Sigma i minus one is sent to the right derived functor of KSI. And tau i sent to the indecomposable projective functor Cta SI. So this assignment extends uniquely to a weak action of the singular braid monoid on the boundary derived category of O0. So here, as usual, weak means that the action of each element of the singular braid monoid is defined uniquely up to an isomorphism of functors. One can note that the first two assignment gives one of the two essentially different actions of the braid group on the bounded derived category of O0. We have another action given by twisting and Joseph's completion functors, but for that action, we do not know how to extend it to an action of the singular braid monoid. Because twisting and Joseph's completion functors are not defined in terms of some kind of translation which preserves category O. They can be defined in terms of the translations on the right, but that translation does not preserve category O. So this theorem was proved in my paper with Katerina on functors associated to a simple root from 2007. And the aim of today's lecture is to discuss the proof of this theorem. Let's start with some easy steps. Of course, we only need to consider the relations involving the tau i's, because we already know that the braid group acts via shuffling and co-shuffling functors. Also, it is enough to check the relations on O0. We already know that the left derived of the shuffling of ST is the composition of the left derived of CS followed by the left derived of CT for any S and T in the set of all simple reflections. So the first claim which we want to prove is that in the case when I and J are not neighbors, then the projective functors theta SI and theta SJ commute. If S and T are two different simple reflections in S, 
which commute. Then we can compute the product of the corresponding cajdan lustic elements HS underlined and HT underlined. So this product is given as HS plus VHE times HT plus VHE. And this is equal to HST plus VHS plus VHT plus V square HE, which is equal to the cajdan lustic element HST underlined more or less by the definition. So in particular, it follows that the product of HS and HT underlined in any order gives HST underlined. Since we know that the action of projective functors on O0 categorifies the right regular module of the integral group algebra of the while group, we obtain that the composition of theta S and theta T is equal to theta ST and is equal to the composition of theta t and theta s. So this gives us the first relation. So in order to prove the next relations, we would need the following auxiliary lemma. So lemma, for any simple reflection s, consider the following exact sequence. So we have theta e shifted by minus 1 and the adjunction morphism to theta s. By definition, the co-kernel of this map is the shuffling functor Cs, and we define the functor Fs as the kernel of this map. So then we have this four-term exact sequence. So the claim of the lemma is that the composition of Fs with theta s in any order is zero. To prove this, we first note that the functor fs is left exact by the snake lemma because it is defined as the kernel of a homomorphism between exact functors. Consequently, both compositions theta s fs and fs theta s are left exact. Therefore, in order to show that they are zero, it is enough to prove that they kill all simple modules. Given a simple module L, we have that Fs kills it if and only if theta s of L is non-zero. Just look at the defining sequence. And similarly, Fs L is equal to L if theta s L is zero. Again, if this is zero, then from the exactness of the sequence, we have that this is an isomorphism. In particular, it follows that Theta s after fs applied to l is zero for any l. In the opposite order, if theta s l is non-zero, then we know that the socle of theta s l is equal to l, which implies that the adjunction morphism evaluated at the module theta s l is injective because it is injective on the socle, and thus fs applied to theta s l is zero. This proves that fs after theta s applied to any simple module l is zero, which completes the proof of the lemma. Now let us prove the relation that cs after theta s is isomorphic to theta s after cs. So we claim that this relation holds. So we apply theta s on both sides to the exact sequence from the previous lemma. Recall that theta s squared is equal to theta s shifted by one plus theta s shifted by minus one. So since theta s composition with f s is zero in both orders, we get the following two exact sequences. The first exact sequence is that theta s shifted by minus one injects into theta s shifted by one plus theta s shifted by minus one, and this surjects onto theta s after cs. And the, second and the second sequence is similar, but the last surjection is onto cs after theta s. Since theta s is an indecomposable functor, whose endomorphism algebra is positively graded and finite dimensional, the only possible injection of theta s shifted by minus one into theta s shifted by one plus theta s shifted by minus one 
the only such possible injection should induce an isomorphism onto the second summand. Consequently, from these exact sequences, we get that theta s after cs is isomorphic to theta s shifted by 1 from the first sequence. And from the second sequence, we get that cs after theta s must be isomorphic to theta s shifted by 1. So this proves the relation from the claim. Moreover, it uniquely identifies this common composition as the functor theta s shifted by 1. The next relation is that if s and t are too different, commuting simple reflections, then ct and theta s commute. Proof, we have already seen that the composition of theta s and theta t in any order coincides with the indecomposable projective functor theta s t. So let us apply theta s on both sides, so separately. We apply theta s to the following right exact sequence of functors. So we have theta e shifted by minus 1, the adjunction morphism to theta t, and the co-kernel is the functor ct by definition. So if we do this, we get the following two right exact sequences of functors. Theta s minus 1 goes to theta s t, and the co-kernel is theta s after c t, or theta s minus 1 goes to theta t s, and the co-kernel is c t after theta s. Now we can recall that from our description of morphisms between projective functors, there is a unique up to a non-zero scalar degree zero homogeneous morphism from theta s shifted by minus one to theta s t. Consequently, from these two sequences, we get that theta s after ct must be isomorphic to ct after theta s. Finally, we are left to prove the most complicated relation, the long braid relation involving both shufflings and translation functors. The claim, if we have two different simple reflections in S, which satisfy the long braid relation CTS is equal to TST, then shuffling by ST after theta T is isomorphic to theta S after the shuffling by ST. To prove this, we take the right exact sequences used in the definition of C S and CT and compose them to get the following commutative diagram. So we have this three times three commutative diagram with exact rows and exact columns. And now we apply theta s to this diagram. So we apply theta s to this diagram and obtain the following commutative diagram, again, with exact rows and with exact columns. So in the first row here, so in this diagram, we have theta e goes to theta s. So if we apply theta s, we can use it theta s square is equal to theta s shifted by 1 plus theta s shifted by minus 1. So the first row of the diagram will look as follows. And then we have this big commutative diagram. And from this diagram, so here in the middle, we have the functor theta s, theta t, theta s. So it surjects onto theta s, theta t, c s. And this further surjects onto theta s, c s t. So we have a surjection from the middle term theta s, theta t, theta s onto theta s after c s t. And both terms here and here, of course, must go to zero under this surjection. So theta s plus theta t after theta s shifted by minus 1, they are in the kernel of this surjection. And from this diagram, one can see that actually they generate the kernel of this surjection. So the term theta s minus 2, it of course goes to 0, but theta s minus 2, this is an isomorphism which cancels these two terms. So from this diagram, we have the following exact sequence. So next, we start from this exact sequence and recall that the middle term theta s, theta t, theta s is isomorphic to theta s, t s plus theta s. 
And since there are no non-zero homogeneous maps from theta s to theta s t s, the only non-zero map from this term theta s to the middle term should be an isomorphism on the second sum on theta s. And so we can split this isomorphism off from the exact sequence. So which gives us the following exact sequence, that theta t theta s shifted by minus 1 maps to theta s t s, and the co-kernel is theta s c s t. And similarly, we obtain a similar sequence where the co-kernel is c s t after theta t. We know that there is a unique map from this indecomposable projective functor to this indecomposable projective functor, which gives us that the co-kernels must be isomorphic. And this completes the proof of the last relation. As a bonus result, we have the following interesting corollary. So for the Lie algebra SLN and any simple reflection S, we have that shuffling by W0 after the translation functor theta s is isomorphic to the translation functor w0 s w0 after the shuffling by w0. So the shuffling by w0, it does not commute with projective functors, but it commutes up to conjugation with w0. Proof, fix a reduced expression of w0, and then we can write the shuffling by w0 as a composition of elementary shufflings along this reduced expression, which we have to reverse because it's a shuffling functor, so it's a right action. So now we can put theta s here, write it on the right. So now we can move theta s from the right of the composition with c w0 to the left using the braid relations in the singular braid monoid. As an outcome, we will get exactly the expression theta w0 s w0 after c w0. Consequence, for the Lie algebra SLN and any element w in w, we have that the composition of c w0 after theta w is isomorphic to the composition of theta w0 w w0 after c w0. So this statement follows directly from the previous corollary, but because using this corollary, we can move through CW0 any composition of the simple translation theta s. Uh, and the price which we have to pay when we do this, then we should conjugate the s's by W0, since each theta w appears as a direct sum in a composition of some theta s's. The statement of this consequence follows. And many of the proofs from today's lectures are taken from my paper with Kevin, which is called Dualities and Derived Equivalences for Category O from 2017. Let us now finish by some questions for PhD students. Question number one. Check that the assignment sigma i to the power plus minus one goes to itself and tau i goes to sigma i minus sigma i inverse extends uniquely to a monoid homomorphism from the singular braid monoid to the integral group algebra of the braid group. Question number two. Prove that the singular braid monoid is generated by sigma i to the power plus minus one and tau one, and find a presentation for the singular braid monoid in terms of these generators. Question number three. Provide full details for the proof of the relation CW0 after theta s is isomorphic to theta w0 as w0 after c w0 for g equal to sln. Question number four. Let s and t be two different simple reflections such that sts is equal to tst. Simplify the composition c t s after theta s after theta t after c t after theta s after c s t. Question number five. Proof using the relations that c w zero after theta s is isomorphic to theta w zero s w zero after c w zero. That c w zero sends projective modules in O to tilting modules for the Lie algebra G 
equal to SLR. Thank you very much and see you next time.